Do you remember that Star Trek episode about the salt eaters? The episode, called The Man Trap, was about a monster that disguised itself as Dr. McCoy's girlfriend. It looked like a giant mop with a suction cup for a mouth. It would suck the salt out of various crew members of the Enterprise, mostly those that were wearing red shirts. Nothing says, I'm dead, on Star Trek like a red shirt. The marks this creature left behind looked like giant hickeys. These same hickeys started to strangely appear on various Olympic athletes. Did the salt creature from 1968 reappear to wreak havoc on all these athletes wearing red suits? Nope. These marks were made from something called cupping. What is cupping, you may ask? Is it another fad that was destined to fade into the wastebasket of athletic fads like Tebowing, Duffnering, and Andre Agassi's denim shorts over spandex look? I decided this was worth taking a closer look so that you don't have to. The first time I was aware of cupping was when I saw those marks on Michael Phelps at the 2016 Olympics in Rio. I was also told that Gwyneth Paltrow was a practitioner of this. Oh, dear. And here I thought it was just one more thing that athletes were trying to help with recovery, like that kinesio tape. Cupping therapy has been around longer than Michael Phelps and Gwyneth Paltrow. It's an ancient form of alternative medicine that goes back to ancient Egypt, Chinese, and Middle Eastern cultures. The medical textbook, The Ebers Papyrus, describes how the Egyptians used cupping in 1550 B.C. There are two methods of cupping, dry and wet cupping. In dry cupping, the therapist puts a flammable substance, such as alcohol, in a cup and sets it on fire. As the fire goes out, the cup is put upside down on the skin. As the cup cools, it creates a vacuum causing the skin to rise. The cup is left in place for three minutes or so. In modern times, for example what Phelps and Paltrow do, a rubber pump is used instead of fire to create the suction for you weenies out there. Therapists also use silicone cups to get a massaging effect. Wet cupping creates mild suction by leaving the cup in place for about three minutes. The therapist removes the cup and uses a scalpel to make tiny cuts in the skin. Then a second cupping is done to draw out a small quantity of blood. This can lead to skin infections, especially if the equipment used isn't sterile. This can also lead to a lot of people running for the door. Cupping therapy supporters believe that wet cupping removes toxins from the body. There's been no evidence to support this. There's also a type of cupping called needle cupping, where acupuncture needles are inserted and cups placed over them. So what does the research show? Basically, that more studies are needed. I went to three different sources, Cedar sinai Cleveland Clinic, and WebMD sites, and all said the same thing. More studies are needed to form a conclusion. Cupping was not found to be particularly harmful, Although with wet cupping, you need to make sure that the equipment is clean and sterile. The bottom line is that people may think it works because they believe it. There haven't been many studies on cupping, and those studies that have been done have had biases. None of the studies done so far have not proven that it doesn't work or that it does as far as hard science goes. Should you do it? Cupping is fairly safe especially if you stick to dry cupping, which is what the Olympic swimmers were doing. But you should go to someone who is trained to do it. There are physical therapists that are trained to do cupping. My opinion, and you can take it for what it's worth, is that if something doesn't harm you and you have investigated it, I repeat, you have investigated it, translated, give your doctor a heads up. 
and it makes you feel better, why not? How you feel in your head is as important as how your body feels. If you don't mind looking like the Star Trek salt creature got to you, or people wondering about your love life, then who cares? But remember, I am not a doctor. Cupping could turn out to be like acupuncture, which started out as alternative medicine without much to back it up. As more studies have been done, there has been more and more evidence of its efficacy. I was going to end the video here, but in my research, I became bothered by some things I found. I wasn't bothered so much by the fact that I found no hard evidence that cupping worked, but that there are people, medical professionals, that are so against it that they have decided that it not only doesn't work, but that it's quackery. It kind of bothers me when people that should know better, people with credentials, not only blow it off, but suggest that studies are a waste of time and money. That should probably be the decision of the researcher and the people giving said researcher the research grant. The medical definition of quackery is the deliberate misrepresentation of the ability of a substance, a device, or a person to treat a disease. The key word is deliberate. If a medical professional says to you, do you want to try cupping? And they tell you that it has been proven to cure arthritis, that is a quack. But if a medical professional says to you, do you want to try cupping? And they tell you there is no hard evidence that it works or whatever condition that is ailing you at the time, that is not a quack. And it's up to you to say yes or no. Does cupping work? Who knows? I guess it works for you if you think it does. There's a big difference between proving that something doesn't work and not being able to prove that something doesn't work. Studies done so far come under the heading of biased, and too few of them to give a definitive answer. None of them have concluded that cupping actually doesn't work, at least not the studies that I have found. If you have found some information and studies that I might have missed, please leave it in the comments below. I would really like to know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell.